think we are almost there. So I'm um, just going to give a big happy welcome to our happy owler hoot, mixer. <laughs> and I'm really excited. And we have some cool people here. And I'm going to, there we go, put that screen down so we don't get feedback. Okay, so we are good to go and can have just a nice time um, getting to know each other. And uh, you missed a good story before we started. So <laughs> and I'm sure there will be plenty more where that came from. <laughs> so, oh. so Ronnie, what are you uh, working on at the moment? Anything interesting? Well, I have um, one of the works work in progress that I'm gonna send a, a entry for the um, the contest is um, a story about Native Americans. Don't say too much about it. We might have a judge handy, so don't say too oh, much about I won't. it. If it's a contest, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to be evil. I'm oh, just okay. Anyway, if it's, it's a contest a, it's, entry, if a judge watches this and then they go, "Oh okay. yeah, she's the one that has a story Histori about the Dead Dead. historical fiction." Cool. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right, that's a safe way to do it. Yeah, I had to stop somebody from spilling their guts in the in the Facebook group. I was like, "Oh wait, the judge is here!" Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the warning. It's okay, it's okay. You know, it's just we try to keep that anonymity, and uh, I of course end up seeing who enters because I'm the coordinator, and therefore I do not judge anything. <laughs> this well, I'm coordinator, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we're trying to be careful so that people have that chance. I hope you're going to enter. The nice thing is you can enter more than one, and we have uh, 15 categories so far. So hopefully you'll find something else you want to enter as well. May I ask a question about that? Um, sure. Uh, and paying the entry fee goes to one place, and then the entries go to another place. Is that a um, the person who's receiving the entries know that we've we've paid our entry fee or how does I always work? check I get uh, our treasurer and membership person and I we all three work together that's Russell and Bonnie and me and we're tight with each other and we always check back and forth Russell ha tells me each week we receive contest entries from the following people and so we know who's paid and we check we keep a running tally and we check against each other all the time okay, so good. I don't receive the PayPal notices but I check and if I am ever not sure, like if I actually get an entry and it doesn't appear they have signed up, I check in with our treasurer because it could be that they just paid the day before and you know, it just wasn't on the list the last time I got it. You know, it's the thing is we're, we have to have a few hands in the pot because we're all voluntary. And so we do that, but we have, as long as we have good communication, we're golden. That's awesome, thank you. Yeah, it's fun to have the contests, I love it. It's such a deal. My gosh, I saw this one where it was $20 per, you could enter as many times as you wanted and it was one contest, but you had to pay $20 each time. I was like, no, thank you. Hmm. <laughs> we have a sweet deal here, 15 for as many things as you want to enter. Pretty cool. Yes, it is. <clears throat> uh, Duke, did you hear about what Bud Hanks did to himself? No. What did Bud do? Good devil. I says, you trying to be macho man or what? He was trying to do something he shouldn't have. And he bungled up his shoulder and he's going to have to have surgery and be out of commission for six or eight weeks. Oh, mm. geez. <sighs> well, I can what? relate. I, I, I know I, you've done the same thing. I know, I know. <laughs> no, not, not, no, I have not done that, actually. I've been very fortunate. Uh, well, no, I've but never... you've done things you probably maybe should have had help or something. That's... Oh, I, I do that routine. That's what I mean. But, <laughs> you didn't uh, bungle your shoulder up and get, uh, but but the other part, yeah. No, I, I have not hurt myself doing silly stuff like that. That's, that, that's, that's really good. But that's all right. My body's taking care of the hurting itself all it's, by itself. I've yeah. got bone spurs in the, my right shoulder right now. Ouch. And the VA has already said, go get it operated on whenever you're ready. And, and I'm like, yeah, but I got work I got to do. So. <laughs> yeah, well, who wants to take out time to be cut open, right? Yeah, I get it. Actually, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Uh, I had bone spurs in the left shoulder some years ago, and they went in and took them out, and it was an uncomfortable recuperation, but boy, the result has been well worthwhile. Mm-hmm. 
So enough, yes. enough poor old man stuff. <laughs> <laughs> enough of the organ recital, right? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> So I used to call it, I'd go say hello to my Aunt Claire. How are you doing? And I'd hear about my this, my that, my bloody da 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 It would be like an organ recital. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I've I'd never see. heard that phrase used before. Organ you, I recital. actually have heard it somewhere else. I'm not, I don't say that I originated it, but I, I, um, I certainly has felt that way. And then I heard someone else use it. And I'm like, okay, I guess it must just be a thing. And I just didn't know it at the time I said it. But it's what it felt like because she'd talk about her gut and her colon and her, <laughs> it was all her internal organs. Occasionally there was a knee and hip involved in stuff too, but you know, it was usually all the whatever is going on inside. So it felt like an organ recital. <laughs> And I was into music, so that was a really easy thing for me to come up with. <laughs> I yep. sang. I didn't That's play the organ, but I Ooh. sang and acted and danced and stuff like that. So. so, Duke, what are you working on? I have a science fiction uh, that I am working on, and uh, it's, it's just an awful lot of fun. Uh, I've got a military uh, lean to it, and there's going to be some romance in it, and uh, it's going to be. When fun. are we going to see it in group? <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm. I actually have started back. It was something that I let lay alone for too long, and I went back and started at the beginning, and I found several things that I needed to change. And I'm trying to get myself up to speed on that so that I can, you know, have something that's worth showing people. Oh, I understand. I so. get it. I look forward to reading it. That's uh, one of my genres anyway, so. Yep. I think you'll like it. I hope you will anyway. I would imagine. <laughs> I got to find somebody who likes it and I got to find somebody else who hates it. Because if, if, I, if I can't find people who love it <clears throat> and people who hate it, then I'm not doing my job. So... <laughs> Well, I think it's good. I can tell there's, you know, sometimes you can tell there's one person who reads your stuff and you go, yeah, clearly I am not her flavor. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yep. Well. Oh, your your blonde vid on the side is right down here at my feet. Good, good. <laughs> good to know that she's still re ready to come when I call. <laughs> she is. <definitely laughs> Oh, for anyone who's going oh, oh my god scandal no his wife knows all about it and it's my golden retriever so there's nothing untoward <laughs> happening here <laughs> yeah. what else do we have in here besides ronnie and duke i see a few other let's see someone else say hello and tell us what you're doing hello <laughs> hey sorry i have allergies <clears throat> But I'm still working on my short story collection and my novel, it does in its final edits, is almost through my critique group for the final time. So hopefully I'll very soon. Sounds Excellent. good. That was Marguerite, by the way. Yes, Marguerite. Hi, Marguerite. Fever. Hi. I could tell through the gravelly. <laughs> I'm sorry about your allergies. That's uncomfortable. That's okay. Nothing's touching them. I'm taking Claritin. That didn't work. And then I, I'm taking um, Zyzel <clears throat> and Zyrtec. And I, I'm just alternating, but nothing is touching it. I recommend vodka. Work. I actually have some moonshine in the fridge that I'm probably going to get into later on tonight. <laughs> well, that sounds great because, you know, two or three uh, shots of that stuff, it's not going to cure anything, but you won't care. You won't care. <laughs> You're like, la, 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 la. <laughs> it was a good for my friend. <clears throat> Excuse me, for my, my play, my story that was turned into a play. It was a gift from him and I haven't drank it yet, so... I really need to at least try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you certainly should do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, a uh, boy from Georgia came uh, 
up to Illinois to go to school and he, uh, a college student, and I was 12 years old, I think. My mother rented the upper floor of our house to 10 college boys. This guy came back home, uh, came back home, came back to Illinois from home, and he brought with him a quart jar of white lightning. And some other guy from Kentucky came back and brought a quart jar of moonshine, Mountain Dew, they called it. And I got to sample both of those. And as foolish as it sounds, the white lightning just started to burn at the tip of my tongue and just continued its way all the way down into my stomach and just lit me up. But the Mountain Dew, not taken at the same time, by the way, slid down just as smooth as milk, went right straight down to the tummy, started a nice little warm glow there, and then blew my head off. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what the difference is. I have no idea. I, I, I lost my taste for both <laughs> on, on that occasion. I think moderation is the key. Oh, yep. yes. Moderation in all things, including moderation. Including moderation, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, someone else tell us all what you're doing, what you're up to. Um, I'm Tamara, and I, this is my first time in the group, so I don't really, I'm just kind of listening and see what's happening, but. Um, Welcome. Thank you. Well, Welcome. Tamara. Um, I am, I've just finished a line by line edit of a memoir, and I'm, I shouldn't have done this, but I've probably got three things going at the same time and I should just not do that and just focus on one. But, um, so I've finished the line by line edit and then I'm going into a rewrite and then I am writing a devotional and I'm writing a journal like a uh, type of journal that you fill in yourself like a planner mm -hmm. you know doing some some of that kind of stuff so very uh, cool I, I love all those kinds of planners mm -hmm. but uh this one kind of is it has a different focus so hopefully that'll that's work. great uh, personally I, I think it can be good to have different projects because they're different and sometimes if you ever feel like you're hitting a wall or you're just like oh with the one you can right bop off to another and go back and forth but that just depends okay. how your brain works yeah. like for me I'm I'm a my mind is always going 100 miles an hour so if I have a lot of projects it's cool because my brain's always like subliminally working on everything all the different things that are going on and something will bounce in my head and whatever you know so but for some people that only can do one thing at a time they probably are better off just to do the one thing so it seems like your mind is probably a little bit more diversified like mine is, mm -hmm. I think if so. I'm right. So yeah. yeah, so you're probably actually a good thing to do the, the multiple. Okay, okay. I know I'm so busy. happy you're here. And this is just, this is just fun time to kind of get acquainted and have a good time. You know, it's not like a big structured workshop or something. It's just, it has been really fun during the pandemic we started this too so we could have some connection because writing is okay. a lonely task right you know <laughs> we're, all, we're at our desks and whatever and we don't see each other enough and every time we get to out it's like oh we really wish we could see each other more and I'm like well we can at least do it virtually and then no one has to leave your home and you know whatever so it's right. been working out really well okay uh Richard another person who uses a laptop <laughs> You're muted, Richard. I'm sorry. You can unmute, Richard. You're, everyone's welcome to unmute as long as you don't have a cacophony of <laughs> dogs or fire uh, engines. <laughs> actually, I'm using a cell phone. Oh, okay. Huh. Hello to everybody down in uh, the Branson area, I imagine. No, all over. All over? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in Illinois. Oh, good for you. Whereabouts? Right uh, near uh, Springfield, Champaign-Urbana, halfway in between. Oh, wow. Okay. I went to school in normal Illinois to Illinois State, so I used to well, live so not quite wife. that area. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah. My wife graduated from there in education. 
Mm-hmm. Yep, I was born in East St. Louis and raised there. So, all right. Super cool. So, are you working on any projects, Richard? I've got a uh, two contracts right now with Ogama. Uh, the first one's for a series of three novels. Um, the, the first one is finished in their hands. The second one is with their uh, story editor. And I'm working on the third. They uh, also contracted with me for the Hawks Bill Craig book that I wrote some years ago. And mm -hmm. that's been uh, rewritten and is coming out as The Long Ride to Justice. They've uh, they've got it complete, ready to go to cover and uh, publish. Very good. So I've been excellent. pretty darn busy. Good. I can see that. That's really excellent. Good deal. Well, I guess everybody misses Fred, don't don't we? Yeah. Uh, we've lost some good yeah. ones lately. We've lost Fred. We've lost Jeannie Horn a couple or last week, and it's been hard hits this year. Yeah, Fred was a good. Good friend of mine, he wrote the uh, for, forward to the Hawksbill Craig. Mm -hmm. uh, I had sent him the manuscript and asked him to look at it. And I waited probably three or four months and uh, called him and I said, would you write a forward for it? He liked the story. He sent me um, and get ready for this 3,000 words for the forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty long. Yeah, sound that's, like, like Fred. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like something he would do for sure. You know, he he was quite something. <laughs> he was, you know, he was real up on the bushwhackers and the Forsyth area down there, and it really fit right into uh, a novel that kind of was right in that period. Mm -hmm. Well, he was a great help. I liked him a lot. Mm hmm. Yeah, he was uh, uh, enjoyed his honey too, his his bees that he used to keep. Yeah, we did too. We had some from him. He was a character. He published uh, a story, uh, Molly meets the Ozarks, about my guide dog and us being in the Ozarks when he had the Mountaineer magazine. And I was very excited to be in a glossy regional publication and actually get money for it. That was like, wow, so cool, you know. <laughs> That was a very cool thing. Yeah. Well, Fred was a great uh, friend to all of us, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So we have you from Illinois, and, and Ronnie is, uh, was it North Carolina? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm on the southeast sure. coast of North Carolina. I was hoping I'd remembered the state right. I was going to feel really stupid if I botched it. That's okay. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. North Carolina. So, so I, you're from... I lived in I lived in the Forsyth area for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was, that's when I was active in the owls back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. It's good to see that we're still around after a few bumps in the road and I was a lot delighted. of time. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really cool. I'm glad that we're still here. <laughs> I'm glad you came back to us too. It's Me nice too. that we don't have to be as uh, uh, Branson locked necessarily. You know, it's, yes, we still have the conference in Branson, but we have a lot else going on too. I'm really sorry I don't make it down there for the in-person meetings. I, I have, you know, in recent years, but I've got a, a meeting in Ponca, Arkansas with the publisher in July. And then I always try to go to the uh, meeting in Eureka Springs. Mm -hmm. uh, that in October. Yep, ours is too this year. They're not on the same weekend, though. No. I'm going to both. I'm so looking forward to it. Yes, uh, I'm glad we're not covering the same weekend. That would be bad. Mr. Cole, welcome. Hey. <laughs> He's muted. You're muted. Uh, you feel you free to unmute unless you've got a brass band playing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hassle the fire engines or a brass band, you can talk to us, Dorian. How you doing? Yeah. Thank you. I'm doing fine. I'm just out mowing the yard. 
and I, I didn't have this on my calendar, but it was in my email. My wife uh, said, hey, you got a meeting. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you made it. Yeah. I owe you an email back. My life has just kind of gotten out of my out of hand for a day or two, so I'll get back to you. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing? Well, I, I'm fine. I'm doing well. Uh, nothing to complain about. You can talk to my wife now. She has a lot to complain about. But Oh, you know. well, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know you've got a lot of projects going. Yeah, I um, I stay pretty busy. Mm -hmm. uh, designing my uh, daughter's website. She's a speech pathologist and has been working in the schools and she's going independent. Mm. Uh, so creating a website for her, uh, which I've done many of those. So it's not a really big deal. And uh, I have uh, six uh, writing projects I'm working on that I can never get to. I don't know why I'm busier in retirement uh, than I was at any time when I was working. <laughs> I can understand that. I'm, I'm never not busy, so I get it. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. Some people sat around and watched Netflix for a year, not me. <laughs> uh, um, well, we spend our evenings anymore. That's my. Uh, that's our great time together, uh, other than travel and you know going someplace, things like that. But mm -hmm. I help her with church projects, but. Uh, you know, are you working on a screenplay? Reason. Pardon? Are you working on a screenplay at the moment? Uh, no, I'm actually working on a, a novel, doing it uh, chapter by chapter just for fun and uh, see how that works and to see if I can get any uh, audience feedback. So I've ah. got it in a couple places. Uh, and uh, but so Where do you have it up? Feedback. Pardon? Where do you have it up on uh, like Wattpad or something like that? or? No, it's, uh, it's uh, on Fiction 8. Uh, and also on uh, 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 Amazon, whatever Amazon service thing is for that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, well, there's uh, during this uh, pandemic, a lot of uh, new services like that have sprouted up, and uh, I'm seeing how they work. You know, I try to keep up with all the new good stuff. I haven't done any of those services myself. Um, so you put up like a chapter at a time and then you see what people comment on it or? Yeah, I try to put up a, a chapter a week. It turns out to be about every 10 days. Which no, <laughs> I, I still. could do it every day, but I, I just can't do, can't find the time to do it. Right. And are you getting any comments back yet? None. Hmm, okay. Uh, I've done uh, a lot of different things to try to get comments on writing and uh, most of the time, I don't get it. I can go on, put things on SurveyMonkey, and uh, which is a good, reliable platform for getting comments. It's anonymous, and you know, I get people who look at it, um, but they don't make any comments. So, well, that's not useful. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I guess well, it's nice that they look at it, but you're like, uh huh, okay. Do they do they think that your writing is flawless? Uh, you know? <laughs> Flawless or maybe fatally flawed. I'm not sure. <laughs> Flawless or beyond redemption. One of the two. We just don't yeah. know which. <laughs> well, I'll be curious to find out uh, as time goes by, you know, if that changes or if you try different services or whatever. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it I, seems to be the, uh, the, the most difficult thing for any writer is to get feedback on his writing. Uh, mm -hmm. it's just uh, <laughs> it's difficult, especially with books. I used well, to be a little bit more on screenplays because they're you know quick reads. But yeah. Phenomenal. Can I make a comment on that? Oh, absolutely. Of course. I tell you, I there's something. there's nothing better than a good content editor. Oh, okay. I'm not a line editor, but a content editor. I think they're called, well, sometimes development ed editors now. That's so yes, they totally are. <laughs> they are. And that's, that's one thing that my publisher has uh, really dug deep for. Uh -huh. And I've, I've got one on the, the uh, East Coast that she reads me the riot act if I need it, you know. <laughs> she, she can go through the story after I've got it written and know more about the early chapters than I remember. And that is, I'm, I'm that is, that age too. <laughs> that is very powerful. <laughs> very powerful help. Uh, I mean, I've written so many stories. I'm trying to remember what's uh, 
once in every one. That's that's difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, and that they they can they can find the things that you lost, you didn't follow up on, you should have. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, a good one is really uh, really great. There's yeah. a lady from uh, down around St. James uh, that now lives in New York, uh -huh. Rebecca Jaycock. She uh, is probably a pretty well name, known uh, name with the St. Louis Writers Guild and the Missouri Writers Guild that uh, if you needed a content editor, she would be Excellent to have. Okay, I am writing it down. I actually use my wife uh, considerably. Uh, Re Rebecca, what was her last name? Acock. Jaycock. Jaycock. Okay. Yeah, I probably will run across <clears throat> her because I'm pretty active on these uh, uh, sites up here in the creative community. Do you know George Rosas in St. Louis? No, I don't. George, okay, he what was. was his last name? Cirrhosis, I think I'm pronouncing it right. He was the president of the Missouri Writers Guild, okay. and he's he's a personal friend with her. Oh, okay. Plus, I've uh, I've seen her a lot of times. Uh, met her down in Steelville. She did a book signing down there at one of the uh, great stores mm -hmm. in Steelville, and uh, met her there. And then she's done she's done two books for me that, that have been really great work. Uh huh. Cool. Having a good critique group is also very helpful. Yeah, I've uh, worked with a lot of writers groups over the years, and they, they can be helpful. And some of them think that they each individual uh, must find something to criticize. <laughs> I, I quickly got out of that because it was <laughs> dang discouraging, actually, to uh, to find somebody that's on an evening drunk and starts commenting on your writing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and well, I've seen that in several writing groups uh, that are just terrible. Uh, mm -hmm. So I quit that pretty early in my writing. Yeah, I haven't been in a writer's group for uh, a long time. Uh, actually, I actually remember several of them online, but we don't do uh, critiquing. I would be lost without my critique group. By the way, hi, Bonnie. <laughs> Me too. That's wonderful. Hi, Bonnie, sweetie. You made it. Hey. Yeah, for a little bit. Oh, I'm glad you've not popped in. Yeah, there's a lot of us that are fans of the critique group, but we have good ones. And it's, I guess it's like anything else. You know, there's nothing as great as a good pair of shoes, but a rotten pair of shoes will ruin your day. <laughs> you well. Definitely good ones and definitely bad ones. Yes. Well, one, one thing COVID has uh, taught us, uh, that's to use Zoom out of necessity. Yeah. And we've uh, got our critique group that's been meeting online. Mm -hmm. And that's working out very well. And R Richard, you might want to consider doing an online critique group. If you get some idiot who comes in drunk, you can always just turn them off. So exactly. you, you bet. You bet. <laughs> well, my, uh, fortunately now my uh, all of my content editing and line editing is paid for by my uh, publisher. So it's, uh, it's, it's really wonderful. Oh yeah. I, uh, I actually prefer independent publishing. I, I've been, been related to this business since uh, mm -hmm. about 1980 and I was actually a literary agent for a while. Uh, and mm -hmm. I just don't, I don't feel real good about mainstream publishing. Uh, I like to write whatever I want to write, you know, eclectic, uh, and uh, try to make it something that people actually want to read, mm -hmm. and well researched. And you know, I write about a book a year. I probably will step it up a little bit this year, but um, I uh, just really couldn't feel real comfortable getting into that. I like self-publishing really well. I I've been quite surprised that uh, Ogama Ogama has pretty much let me write what I wanted to write, uh -huh. uh, but they wanted it to make sense. <laughs> and that's well, that's why, a good thing. And that's know. why the content <laughs> editor is there. Uh -huh. They never have forced me in any, any direction. They've made suggestions like, well, maybe there's too many 
books that we already have of Dusty Richards right. that are uh, about the uh, Cherokee Indian. <laughs> mm -hmm. So maybe you want to use some other uh, some other tribe in your story, things like that yeah. uh, to kind of help build the book. But they really have been very open about uh, about the publishing. I have a friend who's a best-selling author uh, with his series, but uh, sometimes uh, the market just doesn't want him, so he, he just goes and self-publishes the story. I understand. I, I did that with the first book, the Hawksbill Craig, and uh, that's the one that Fred uh, had written the forward, and I sold about 2,000 copies, which uh, I still... I still sell, get a check for a couple hundred dollars every, oh, I guess every couple months from a, a little uh, grocery store filling station down in St. James, Missouri. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> wow. I love that. That's great. I read that book. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a good book. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, it's coming out again as a long ride to justice. And uh, I've added, I think, four or five chapters to it that kind of take the uh, little slave girl's body and moves it back up into a safe place where the uh, people can't find it, if you remember any of the story. It's been a long time ago. I remember that was really good, and I liked your um, descriptions of the scenery and, you mm -hmm. know, and all that, and I remember a little bit about the story, um, but I do remember I really enjoyed it. Well, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank we're you. Glad so you much. came back to us, back to the fold. <laughs> and um, did you write a sequel to that? Was there another one? No, there isn't. Uh, okay. The the publisher Mogama really won't take an author today unless you have a series of three books uh they want a series <clears throat> and they took me uh on the basis of this story i've written about a girl who comes back from iraq who has ptsd and i had written the first story and finished it and i was in uh, eureka springs and they were there. And Casey, who's the uh, top guy, CEO of that, uh, had gotten the Hawksbill Craig maybe three years earlier. <laughs> and he, he remembered me. And he said, have you written anything else? And I said, well, yeah. Would you like to have it? Here's the uh, flash drive. <laughs> <laughs> And they took it and uh, sent it to the, uh, they had a committee of people around the country, actually, and they sent it to all of them and came back and said, we want a series of three books. So that's kind of where I am. Uh -huh. Very good. Nice to be wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Casey's sure, yeah. a good guy. Yeah. They, uh, they're, they're really good people. They've had a real struggle with the uh, with COVID down in Bentonville, where they're from, and uh, they've lost some some good people that were on the board. Uh, lost one in New York. Lost my editor, but she, believe it or not, in spite of them uh, not having her anymore, she quit. She still uh, is doing my content editing. Uh, for no pay. So uh, I'm glad she stuck with me. She's great. Well, it's pretty amazing. It's been a good ride. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Sandy, what do you have going on? Oh, I've got several things. I was listening to him talking about nobody wants to comment on things and I've had my blog up for a year and I'm just now getting positive comments from it and it takes a long time sometimes to get comments from a lot of things that you want to mm -hmm. hear from you just have to be patient and 
I got the Christian Writers Contest sent in and I'm started on the Owls. And then I've got the lesson coming up and, and several other projects I'm working on. You're a busy lady. And you have your weekend blog challenge. Yeah. All kinds of cool things going on, yeah. What's your blog about? It's uh, written for the widows, uh, learning to cope with being a widow and uh, oh. all the things that happens and all the things and challenges. Yeah. Like I haven't, uh, I don't think I put it up yeah. yet, but like this last week, I uh, had back in March paid to have two new tires put on my car. The two on the front was supposed to be put on the back and the spare put underneath. And last week I had a flat tire and lo and behold, nobody puts the spare back. So I didn't have a wheel. So I had to get a, a record ride home because nobody bothered to put the wheel back and I can't find anyone. And it was a wretchable dealer that's willing to admit that they didn't put the wheel back and they don't know where it's at. So huh. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to get a wheel. Thanks. And well, too many times men, men treat women with a lot of disdain and they don't try to do what's right. Yes, they do. But that, that's wonderful you're writing that blog. I, I can see how it would be very helpful. Uh, I know a lot about Windows Widows. I used to do a lot of visitation back in the uh, 1970s and 80s and uh, visited with uh, a lot of people somewhere in long-term care, some of them are widows, and I really felt for them. Mm -hmm. difficult, and it was very lonely. Yeah, it definitely is. It'd be wonderful if somebody could solve the loneliness problem that people have. Wouldn't but, that be? Yeah. Well, I think a Zoom helps. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does. Um, and I know I've, I've done a lot of... Um, yeah, welfare checks on people through this pandemic that, uh, you know, just to try to help because yeah, there is, that's a problem. And uh, anything that we can do to help make it a little bit easier is a good thing. So let's see, do we have somebody else who hasn't talked about, well, Bonnie, we saw that you're here. Do you want to say anything about what project you're working on? Uh, uh, yes, I do. Good. I, last Sunday night, I mm -hmm. wrote the end <gasps> of my uh, Western time travel. <laughs> Yay. Yay. That's Yay. awesome. Way to go. I'm excited, but now I realize all the mistakes I made. So <laughs> I got to go back. Hi, Ronnie. Hi. Nice to see you. Good um, to see you, Bonnie. I, uh, Duke, you would laugh your head off if you saw what I did, the first part of the book. Um, whoever said that now that you've written the end, the last chapter, the end, you can go back and write the first. And I think that's, I wrote the first three chapters. I thought I had those really ironed out. And I will tell you right now, I did not. So I've got to go back, go through, fix it, and, um, you know, kind of start all over again. But I was really, really happy. And I sent it to my critique group. And so I'm waiting to see what they think about the ending. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad we worked out. You called me about that one issue. And yeah, I was so happy that all of us uh, <laughs> we came yeah. up with something else in there. That was very cool. Between I was on the phone with Rhonda and the lady who comes and cleans my house once a month happened to be here and she heard us talking and she threw her two cents in and it kind of solved one of my problems. The three of us together. She had the, the languaging, the Christian languaging that I just like, I know there's a word for this and I just don't know what it is. And she had it. So that was so great. Yeah. Yep. So that, really that, that worked out well. Oh, yeah. So I'm excited. I'll be working Absolutely. on your pages tomorrow night. Do what? I'll be working on your pages tomorrow night. Yeah, oh. and I'm going to be working on yours too. <laughs> and April's. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. And we are going to meet in person 
next month for the first time in, gosh, Marguerite, how, how long's it been? I think it's been about 18 months. Yeah, I think so. That's a long time. Well, so it was even before the pandemic, you guys hadn't met in person then. Yeah, we had some, some health issues going on mm -hmm. and scheduling conflicts, so we, we weren't able to meet right. for a while. I just think it was even I worse than I, the pandemic. I threw a so shoulder surgery in there too, somewhere. So mm -hmm. that was part of it. We didn't think she wanted us in her hospital room telling her where she made mistakes. So <laughs> probably not. Yeah. I don't know. I think I probably would have said, yeah, I want them in here. Let them in so that we could do the critiquing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can just imagine how brutal you would have been with my adverbs while on hydrocodone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> adverbs, adverbs. Funny. I, I love to try and kill her adverbs and she just won't have any part of it. So mm -hmm. what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I need to find a funny about adverbs to share next week. I'm trying to do a Pump day humor little thing on Wednesday every week. And last week, the comma thing that Russell shared got a lot of comments. And uh, I think I need to find an adverb one for next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Marguerite, in your defense, I did read something the other day that said romance novels use a lot of adverbs. So I've been telling you that for four years. I know, um, and I just kept cutting them out. Mm-hmm. Tell people just I have birthdays like artichokes, and I'll cut them right out. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie has taught me a whole lot, and I don't uh -huh. use nearly the adverbs I used to. Well, well they're nice, like, they're a little bit like those hot peppers. You know, a little bit can go a long way. <laughs> that's fun and we're doing we're looking at marguerite's book for um is this the third time i think so i think so too and it is polished i mean it is looking so good cool well, I, owe, I, I owe most of that to Jeannie. she was my editor yeah, yeah, I miss her. Yeah. I miss her. Well, you know, she was doing, Jeannie was so giving and so kind. I think like maybe 10, 15 years ago, uh, I won a free edit. Uh, she gave a free edit for first place in a contest or something, and I won it. Mm -hmm. And she, she did. She went through and she edited my first draft of that. But she kept saying she was not through, that she still owed me some edits. And so she actually was editing that again. And when I told her I was writing this um, Western time travel, she said, oh, I want to see it. Send that to me, too. And so... She's a I had sent some of that to her, and I never... I, didn't get anything back from her on that one, bless her heart. Well, no, that unfortunately, but, yeah. You know, she just was, oh, no, I'm going to do this for you. So what she was you a really good, really good editor and just a cool person. She was. She was. And I remember she had that uh, owl hood contest about, um, you know, your favorite owl memory or something like that, that, that I won. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, to have those kinds of things too and she would be in the money and I uh, of course a lot of us joked of where you taking us to dinner with all your loot you know yeah. <laughs> she won about eight contests one year in the money somewhere in them she she won every year I mean mm -hmm. and I have one of her short stories here that she sent me mm. mailed it to me and she said you inspired this short story for me oh. Something I said, I don't know what it was, but she hmm. said it inspired this short story 
and she sent it to me and it's excellent. It really is. Wow. Yeah, that's really cool. Rhonda. I have such a good attitude about that. My daughter still mad at me about the one Marguerite that got put on the COVID play mm -hmm. about the teddy bear. She's still mad at me because I made a joke about her giving me a case of toilet paper for Christmas. She thinks that was horrible, but I made a joke out of it. And she still <laughs> won't hardly talk to me about it. <laughs> so, it made but, uh, a story. It was perfect. I thought it was. Mm -hmm. But she thought it was so horrible that I made a joke out of getting a case of toilet paper for Christmas. I still got probably a third of a case left from that toilet paper. <laughs> Everybody needs As it. As you rewriting on these things, I've, I've gone back through on my uh, widow's devotional before I sent it out again. And you do find things that you need to, to fix. It's just hard to catch everything. Mm -hmm. Rhonda? Yes, sir. Uh, I need to run. I That's got all right. last last uh, run to the barn to uh, close up the horse stalls and finish. Oh, say hey to the day. horses for me. Hey, All Richard, right, my dear. Richard, before you run off, uh, you, you showed us your friend a little bit earlier, and I wanted not I wanted to make sure that I told you it looks like you've got a really good friend there, a good companion. Oh, you, the German Shepherd? That's the one, yes. Uh, let me call him over here for another look. Come here, Tuck, Tuck, Tucker. Come here, Tucker. Come here, Tucker. Gemma. Say hi, Tucker. There you go. How's Hello, it? Tucker. Say hi, Tucker. <laughs> Here's Gemma. Took his head, says, nope, nope, don't want to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> There's Gemma. There's your blonde. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. How's the dog? <laughs> How's your dog? My dog is good. She's so cute. And my cat is MIA. She doesn't want me to pick her up, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. They're well. so cute together. They like to play together and snuggle. And I oh, love sir. your German Shepherd. Thank you. And I always love your dog sitting there so calmly under the chair. Yep. Yes. I, many times. Yep. I went from Molly to Gemma. <laughs> oh, okay. My black dog and now my blonde dog. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Take care. Good to nice see, to see you, you again. Thanks Good for to letting see me you. Uh, a resource for people if you ever need help with anything. Feel free to contact me, but it takes me over a month to read a book, so I don't do much of that. No, but uh, Dorian, you ha you had let the cat out of the bag that you're good with websites, so you know, watch out. Oh, yes, I caught that. <laughs> I, I caught that. Yeah, I know. I'm sure Duke did too. And then also, I know Dorian a little better than some of y'all because we've been emailing and talking back and forth. But he's uh, an expert with screenplays and has all kinds of great resources. So. Members can find him in our members only group, and he's also in the, the open season group as well. But a, a, a phenomenal resource has joined us along with all the amazing talent that we have here. It's, I'm just calling him out because he's new to us. <laughs> well, thank you for those glowing words, but uh, I'm impressed with Al and we're very pleased to uh, be among you. And uh, I, uh, I uh, don't count myself really as big much, although I will tell you what I do. But um uh, uh, i'm just pleased to be among you i am impressed i'm so glad uh, yeah. Maryland is a good where, group of people. where is al based at is it branson missouri or is it we're not kind of based anymore i mean our conferences okay. are in branson uh when we have well the our virtual one was based wherever you live but our uh fall one is in branson but we have members that you know ronnie's in uh the um, East Coast and uh, Dorian's up in the St. Louis area and um, Richard Snelson is up in Illinois and we have Arkansas, Missouri. So we're kind of branching out because the internet is meaning we don't have to be as parochial as we did used to yeah. decades ago, Tamara. So okay. yeah, we're kind of open on that score. Where are you, Tamara? Well, I just moved to Mountain Home in Arkansas. Arkansas. From Branson. So Okay. I really miss Branson, but um, I'm liking wow. Mountain Home too. So that's pretty good. country up there. Yeah, it is really beautiful. Arkansas is a beautiful state. Mm -hmm. I thought it was uh, Southern Missouri. I really love it. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
my chunk of family moved out here to Southwest Missouri and I saw Arkansas and I'm like, why didn't you pick Arkansas? It's prettier. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm from everywhere, Midwest and even uh, Atlanta. And <laughs> mm. <LA> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've lived a few places too. <laughs> yep. I was joking with my friend, I'm doing the Colorado thing today where it's it's that weird temperature where you're wearing shorts and a sweater, <laughs> a sweatshirt. Yeah. It was warm, then it got cooler, and then you're like, uh-huh, you're kind of in between things sometimes. <laughs> and we both had lived there for a number of years, so. Well, I got to mow in the rain today. It uh, was supposed to be 30% chance of rain. And it seems like that usually means 30% rain whenever I'm doing something outside. <laughs> yeah, they wait and watch and wait. Okay, when he opens his door, let it loose. Yep, that's why it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, I understand that. That's really cool. Well, does anybody have, uh, is anyone not spoken? I was just trying to see if we're missing somebody. I don't want anyone feeling left out. Did we get everybody? Well, everyone has spoken, but okay, uh, good. not that much for some. No, some people haven't spoken so much. Who else wants to bounce in and tell us something cool or fun or whatever in your life? Wow. I just Hello. graduated college. Woo! Oh, congratulations. I was a I was a hairdresser for 25 years. And I mm. thought I have not seen anybody 80 or older as a hairdresser. So I didn't really want to retire. <laughs> so I went back to college and I uh, got a bachelor's of professional and technical writing degree. Wow. So hopefully. I can do mm. something now. I'm sure you can. I just saw on um, a couple of the job places, just put technical writer in there. There's a buttload yeah. of jobs. Yeah. Mm. I just spent a lot of time as a technical writer, made a lot of money doing it. Yeah. I, have oh, I love your cat. Oh, thank you. That's one of them. Oh, oh. hi, pretty. We have I had two like that. I had oh. two, and they're, they're both um, passed away. But oh. oh, I love those cats. Yeah, mm. this one was a, a lot of fun. We we got them. We went down actually uh, to Southern Missouri and, and got them, <clears throat> and we picked him out because he was crazy. <laughs> and I just fit right in. Yeah, <laughs> he was found a good yeah. home, huh? <laughs> yeah, feels right at home here. Yeah, <laughs> and like just just like our cats that we had. Oh, I like I cats. Like we used to have dogs, but uh, you have to walk them, and if you leave, you got to make arrangements for them, and all that kind of thing and mm, yeah let's take care of themselves yeah they do yep. they definitely do oh i didn't say it i'm working on a sequel to uh a paranormal uh suspense novel my, uh they all died smiling is the book i have out and my new one is a uh, hypnotic deception that i'm working on mm, and cool. the critique group is just starting to read it to the first few pages they've only seen because I just started with them last week, but yeah, so that's what I'm working on. Plus bringing Owl into the screaming, kicking and screaming into the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate yeah, your much. efforts, Rhonda. <laughs> yep. You appeal to a younger audience with paranormal in it? Oh, I guess it will. I just, that kind of appeals to me because my life is paranormal. I'm a, a medium among other things. And oh, okay. that's what I, I mean, I enjoy that stuff anyway. So I guess, yeah, it probably does appeal to a younger audience. And I guess I'm, I see a lot of it out there. So I guess I'm right in the pocket there, but yeah, yeah. it's it's just uh, kind of a part of my life anyway. Now my character is not me by any stretch, but, uh, but I have fun with it. I keep trying and or trying to put it into a novel, but I, I never get it there. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> the book I'm writing right now is The Devil Did It, which uh, uh, the woman thinks that a, a demon shot her boyfriend. Um, but of course he didn't. <laughs> it wasn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, wasn't really a demon. No. Yeah, that happens too. Yeah, would have been fun, but no, it didn't go that way. Mm-hmm. They tried. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. It's always interesting to 
I like to sometimes do that where I throw what you think may be a paranormal element and then it's not. And uh, when I was in a group, Bonnie, remember how when I wrote something that was mundane, you guys would be like, shocking, there's no weirdness in it, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I've known Rhonda a long time. (laughs) Right. Yeah, we used to be in our group is, you know, Bonnie's moved our group is long defunct, but yeah, I was working on a different uh, fantasy novel and I would shock everyone and write something mundane once in a while. <laughs> are, are you familiar with Raymond Moody? Um, possibly. He has a seminar going on uh, soon uh, for mediums. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really? I never had a seminar. Like, I, I grew up and it was like, you don't talk about that stuff. Okay, yeah. so you learn not to. So I was like, and now there's seminars on it? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. He was a doctor who, uh, who kept his, his patients kept telling him of paranormal experiences that they were having. Hmm. And he got kind of interested in and uh, started investigating because he didn't believe them. Uh, so uh, he spent years and years and years investigating all of this. Um, and finally came to the conclusion that, uh, that there was something going on there. And yeah. after a while, especially in retirement, he devoted his life to doing more of that. And um, he has an institute now uh, where they do that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and uh, he has people come in and, and talk and that kind of thing. If you're, if you're hmm. interested, you know, some people, uh, sure. that, some people are not. I'm not going to do the seminar. I'm not that interested, but... Oh, no, well, thanks for letting me know. I will at least investigate. Yeah, I've got your email. I'll, I will send the, uh, if I still have it, I'll send awesome. it to you. Cool. Yeah, cool. I wrote it down. I got my little trusty pad here with interesting quotes of writing quotes on it. So I wrote them down. Thank you very much for telling me about that. Sure. That's pretty cool. So um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm telling you I'm a resource. Oh yeah, I I love to resource with people. That's so much fun, and that's the that always happens. Even if we're just kind of getting to know each other or whatever, there's there's always a little bit of throwing down of resources and helpful tidbits because we cannot help ourselves. <laughs> Dorian, you said you were a technical writer. Oh, what area uh, did you write? What what industry? Uh, both software and hardware. I was um, I spent uh, probably ten years, maybe more. Yeah, a lot more actually, um, because I've done it off and on uh, since the time that I uh, got into quasi-retirement. Uh, but uh, uh, a lot of it was writing software manuals for internet uh, type applications. Uh, and a lot of this is when the internet first started. So uh, from 1995 uh, up through 2002, I, I worked uh, intensively on that. And then I've done things like I wrote the um, emergency manual for uh, New Zealand uh, for their emergency services Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a lot of other things. Plus I do websites, uh, do marketing. I was a marketing manager for two companies. Another Uh aspect of technical writing. Um, I I did technical writing for the power generation uh, industry, which uh was- Did you really? was was in that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I actually did a lot of nuclear, but I did some safety manuals, too. I, that was interesting you said that. I did safety oh. manuals for fossil plants. Uh-huh. Isn't that yeah. boring? Oh, well, that sounds like a really good cure for insomnia, yeah, but maybe you wrote... I was trying to get out of fossil fuel plants. <laughs> I'm sorry? I spent 10 years trying to get out of fossil fuel plants. Are you serious? I am. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I work for them. Yeah, uh, doing, doing a variety of things, but yeah, <laughs> I was all over that business. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah, that um, is. I'm a uh, I'm I'm a half technical person and a half people person, so I've done a lot in both areas. Mm-hmm. Yep, educated. Yeah, I can relate to that. So, big pardon, uh, Duke. I uh, just say I can relate to that. Uh, oh. I've. I've I love people. I have loved working with people. Uh, I was in law enforcement for a while. And cool. if you're not a people person, you're not going to succeed at that at all. Uh, yeah. And, but, uh, and, and I love engineering. Uh, the, the computer systems engineering has been, uh, been a real fun job. So, uh-huh. yeah. 
Well, it seems like we uh, we all have a lot of uh, techie backgrounds. <laughs> yep. We all like to eat and sleep indoors. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm fond of Good it. Good point. <laughs> If you're a writer, you make a living. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This well, has been so much fun. What is, Marguerite, was that you going to say something? I was. I was going to share something about my job today. Go for it. Cool. Yes. And you all, especially you tech people, are going to be so jealous. I spent eight hours on a Zoom call with the Missouri State Historic Preservation Office. Ah. Are you wow, jealous? that's a long Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, well, we had an hour for lunch, but that stuff is so dry. I knew most of it, but they were just educating us on all kinds of things. And for my for my job, we deal with them for homes. We, we only deal with homes. So all the bridges and the pipelines and, and all of that stuff was just mind numbing. <laughs> As you're like of bridges mm -hmm. yes uh, but they saved the best for last we didn't get into dead bodies until the last three minutes oh man <laughs> oh <laughs> but just got good yeah good material preservation have to do with dead bodies <laughs> <laughs> if we're working on a home and we discover a dead body we have to notify law enforcement and the missouri state historic preservation office on the off chance that it's a archaeological site. Oh, okay. I wouldn't have thought of that. The police, yes, I wouldn't have thought of the Historical Preservation Society because, uh, wow, well, huh, okay. <laughs> Eight hours of that. Mm. And I was snuggled in my hoodie the whole time because my boss's office was freezing. So I totally get the sweater in May. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I was in short sleeves earlier, and then it got too cold, and I was like, I am freezing. I'm going to my sweater. Yeah. I saw the end of our local news, and they have these fishermen guys that have their little segment every week or so, and they're like, we should not be in our coats in May. <laughs> yeah, we're well above average up here. Mm. In the 80s, all week. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we've been we were in the sixties. It's also very rainy and damp. So, and I was sitting outside on my deck working, which was nice. Except, you know, then it got a little chilly. So, glad I had the sweater. But it's also very humid here. I'm sticky. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to talk about humidity. When it gets humid, I die. Mm hmm. <laughs> That's a. I can work for fifteen minutes and I'm done. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I don't do well with heat and humid. You did see how frizzy my hair is, right? It's, ah. Yeah, that's the humidity. Yeah. yeah, same thing here. Uh, Duke, where are you from? Or where do you live? Right now, uh, for right now, for the past 35 years. Uh, it sounds like, like today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, my wife. Uh, her dad worked at the Un University of Arkansas. He was a uh, drama professor there. Oh, cool. And uh, he, they went on sabbatical. And we got to come down to Fayetteville to house sit mm -hmm. and mind the horses and the dogs and everything else. And we just fell in love with the place. So yeah, it's pretty. Fayetteville. They came back and we moved out and moved into a place of our own. So... <laughs> Dude, that, that area would be one of my choices of places to live. It's really nice. Yep. But it's it's a little humid today, too, though. So. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be hard to find anywhere where the weather is whatever you consider perfect. All the time. <laughs> Hawaii stays in the 80s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I refuse to go there, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Well, super fun night, you guys. It was nice to visit with everybody, and we'll be doing it again. And um, Sandy, you're doing our next um, Wise Writer mini class next week. So, how about you tell us a little bit about that before we sign off? Well, mine is on typewriting. You know, I do the the uh, newspaper columns every week. Mm -hmm. But I've also 
done uh, the greeting cards. Uh, I've lost track of how many hundreds of uh, word searches I've done. And through tight writing and, and these smaller disciplines, it, it releases your creativity for the bigger projects and helps you to think more creatively. And that's what my lesson's going to be. I'm going to have some markets. Uh, I've sent her the, some of the markets and she's going to share them with you and mm -hmm. encourage you to try to these smaller markets and these tighter writing so you can free up your mind to work on the bigger projects. It's I'm excited for it. Huh? Yeah, I'm excited for it because um, I know one of the things that I like to do for that helps my writing is to do the 100 word stories where you have to write a whole story in 100 words and anything where you need to have that economy of words. It's great because it is short. Um, tight writing is it's we don't want a million words to say something in this day and age especially so it's going to be a really good workshop and is it it is friday night next week the 28th and <clears throat> everyone will be getting um you know the announcements and you will have uh, she has a nice bunch of resources which everyone will get and uh you'll start to receive those in your email for members and th that'll start to come out soon. But yeah, it's the 28th and I think seven o'clock, right? Yeah, I believe, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, seven o'clock on the 28th. It of course will be recorded. So if you long to come, but it's date night or whatever, you'll still be able to get it. But of course, it's always cool if you can be there in person because that, that energy and that synergy between people um, always makes it something special. So I hope you guys can come. So we're looking forward to uh, that. And um, I think that's about it. I'm just happy that we could all get together. Duke, did you have anything you wanted to let people in on? No, I'm afraid not. Other than, you know, it's just really fun to see everybody. So yeah, glad to see y'all. It is. This has been really cool. You know, it's kind of like the pandemic got us to think about it, but uh, but it might be worth keeping up afterwards. <laughs> Absolutely. And don't forget their flash friction. If you lost your prop, make sure everybody gets their prop for the flash friction on the contest. Yes, I, our photo disappeared. We'll get it back up there. Um, so I have that ready to go back out and go, I don't know what happened. The gremlins were live and well. But yes, we do have a photo photo prompt is what she was saying. I thought she said a flop for a minute. And I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, we have a photo prompt for the flash fiction contest category, but the gremlins ate it. I sent it to the webmaster, but the gremlins took it away somehow. So we'll be sure that gets back up. Um, but the deadline is, you know, quite a bit away, so we'll have a chance to, to fix that. But our, yeah, we do have our writing contests, and there's 15 categories, only $15 for members to enter, and you can enter as many categories as you want for that same fee. So we are a good deal for that. That's really, really, really inexpensive. <laughs> yeah, right. He's like one. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you've seen all the different things. Where it can be twenty or thirty dollars per category, or fifteen per category, if you're really lucky, maybe. Yeah, this is fifteen for you can enter as many as you feel like it, which is nice. It gives you the freedom to go. Well, I don't normally write westerns, but I'll give it a whirl. And the year I did that, I actually took second place on a western when I'd never written one. So you just oh. don't ever know. <laughs> like it's like if it, it makes you free to try out because it's not like you have to be out of pocket any extra money to enter an extra contest. I wrote a Western recently and placed first with it. My only Western. Yes. Ooh, good job. Love it. Yeah, you don't normally write Westerns either, so. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody, for coming. We appreciate you, and happy writing. Stay creative. Keep the juices flowing. If you need some inspiration, just tap into some of your fellow owls, and we will bolster you up and get you over the uh, the hump the slump or the whatever. Yep. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody. Bye. 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 Good night.